While 3DB always had its great character performers like Charlie Board, Ren Miller, Dick Crambert and John Stewart, the station had another important claim to fame. It was recognised as having the best team of good voices in Melbourne radio. There was a DB sound. Quality voices, classy voices. Call them what you will, but boy did they have style. You could even understand what they were saying. One of the most cultured and beguiling was the voice of Jeff McComas. But who gets Jeff's vote? Well, I think John Eden had one of the best voices in broadcasting. It was an excellent voice. He started work at 3AK when 3AK was in those days owned by the Mac Furnishing Company and had a nighttime licence operating from 11.30, I think it was, p.m. until 5 a.m. They were Melbourne's only all-night station. They didn't operate during the day. And, uh, and Eden had a job there for, for some years, and then uh, he later came to 3DB, and then later became breakfast announcer, where he was uh, extremely popular. Extremely popular is just the tip of the iceberg. John Eden was and has remained one of 3DB's most identifiable and successful performers. When John joined 3DB in September 1949, he surely couldn't have realised the career that was ahead of him. He worked in most of the popular shows of the 50s, but it was the breakfast session that was to bring him his greatest fame. DB time at 17 minutes past seven on a sticky, humid, rotten Friday morning. Something nicer. From snowbound New England states, the Gibb brothers and the lights went out in Massachusetts. John took over the breakfast program from his friend Dan Webb in 1956 when Danny left to join Channel 7. Although 3DB had been on the air for almost 30 years, John was only the fifth man in the breakfast chair, following on a, a great tradition begun in earnest by a Queensland stage performer called Vernon Sellers, who was the original Daybreak Dan, whose crown was then worn by the rarest early bird of them all, the aforementioned John Stewart, who passed over the reins to Dan Webb, and then it was John's turn. And what a turn. Others would have been daunted by his illustrious predecessors, but not John. For 20 years, he brought to the 3DB breakfast program his own individual style, charm and humour. His retirement from the shift brought many thousands of letters descending upon this station and show business publications. But more of that later. The record books still show that for a phenomenal 17 years, he was number one. The opposition threw everything they possibly could at him. But John remained just John, and that's what people wanted to listen to. 3 B Melbourne, 3 LK Wim Ramalli, 11 and a half minutes past 7 today is Monday, November the 27th, as we bid good morning to Geoffrey McComas. Good morning, Jackson. Morning, Mac. A tremendous weekend. Yes, very good indeed. Yes. What you do, you, you saw Famo on Saturday night, Friday uh, night. Friday night, yes, yes, saw the lad take the title, and uh, he was in brilliant form. Hmm. Not the best boxing engagement I've ever seen. No. But uh, both men were obviously very keen about the title. And that's the way it developed. But Famo was very much in control when the fight was stopped. He didn't inspire you after the bout to issue a challenge to Famo to defend his title against you. No, I, I'm, I'm very glad that Famo's a friend of mine. I see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very glad indeed. Yes, uh, yes, not bad. I was talking to John Hall here, who's working with us this morning, a little bit earlier. And uh, he said it was marvellous yesterday. Raylene had him all lined up to cut down some wood at Calorama on mm -hmm. their block, you know. Mm -hmm. See the lad in there? He's poised, ready for the big plunge, you know. He's, he's, oh, he's going off very, very oh, shortly. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Raylene hasn't told him the exact date yet, but he, no. he, he's, he's going to go off, and uh, they've got a block up at Calorama. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy, well, That's right. Why shouldn't he join the rest of us and look miserable? No. Uh, the sound of a friendly radio station, thanks to John Eden and Jeff McComas. Before John's breakfast session success, he'd done almost everything it was possible to do at 3DB. He was the first compere of Swallows Juniors, which Brian Naylor later transferred successfully to television. He read news, he introduced the serials, he discovered a young bloke called Ernie Sigley. For breakfast, he just took all of his expertise with him and succeeded. But there has to be more to it than just that. What does John believe is his reason for success? I've always felt I could communicate pretty well with people, Bert, and uh, I've always mixed with people. I think a lot of our uh, young people these days who want to be a success in the radio are all too inclined to perform to themselves in a studio, enjoy their own work, then go and celebrate somewhere in a nearby pub with their own contemporaries and say how good they were. 
I think it's terribly important now, as it always was, to get out and have a look at what your audience looks like. Now, I happen to do the shopping pretty regularly down the South Melbourne market. And I've got to know and, and talk with Turks and Greeks and a lot of our ethnic people and uh, people of all walks of life. And uh, I try to listen rather than, you know, propound my theories to them. And uh, I think it's very necessary in radio to have a, a comprehension of what your audience looks like. Uh, I do wish some of our young people would get out and mix with people and uh, know what the audience looks like, as simple as that. John has been one of the few to span the two eras of DB's extraordinary years of success. He moved with ease from the Dick Cramb and John Stewart era into that of the late 50s and 60s, which could easily be called the John Eden era. But what of those early years? Why was DB such a great station? We were a wonderful team. We didn't really have stars in those days. I, I think we were just a, a highly successful team of fellows who enjoyed one another. And, uh, you know, I mean, you were told flick off Percy if you uh, try and behave in an elitist sort of way, you know. Um, but it was a wonderful atmosphere in which to work. You know, we were successful, we were acknowledged to be successful. And it was rather nice to go somewhere and be recognised as somebody from 3DB. We were awfully proud. But what sort of pride was knocked out of John when Melbourne learned that its most successful commercial breakfast announcer ever was coming off his shift? It was simply a management decision, but the effects were to be felt for long after his early morning farewell on the 19th of September, 1975. It's time to say aroo for <laughs> for the last time. So not getting all choked up. I'll say aroo for the last time, or will it be? You never know of the fox, do you? It's nine o'clock. Aroo! This is 3DB Radio News. <laughs> an end of an era in radio came about in Melbourne this morning. 3DB's long-running breakfast show announcer, John Eden, has retired after about 20 years on the early session. The end of a golden era. In 1987, it's very easy to be wise and look back on decisions made years ago. This one made in 1975. But the fact remains that no 3DB breakfast program has enjoyed as much success since. And while your humble narrator has designs on rectifying that situation, It'll be a brave person to suggest that John Eden's era could ever be emulated, but an even braver man to try. His score is on the board. Now the only thing that would make his life complete is a Collingwood Premiership. Come on, Maggies. The Silver Fox has waited long enough. You owe it to him. As a matter of fact, John is owed by many, including generations of 3DB listeners who have been served so well by this master of radio.